They say your days, but well, my days are not. They're in the hands of God. So we're talking about relationship. Relationship. That's what we talk. What is relationship? Relationship is between you, a man, and a man. A man can be a woman. Okay, somebody say, who are the people? Okay. I call them the fams. Their names are the fams. The F-A-M-S. They are the fams. They have the gays in it. They have the lesbian in it. They have the people who are into the system for money. They have the ones that are into the system for protection. They have the people inside that are for fame, popularity, and therefore they have a lot of people who are into it for different position. And they say they need me so much to expand their kingdom that I will be a rightful man to be chosen. So they are all, most of them, but I tell you, 70% are men of God. 70% are men. So I'm not going to be part of them. I left and I've left and I've gone. And I'm gone forever. So relationship is between men and men. What do I mean men by men? A woman is part of men. When the Bible said, His spirit will come down for all, all the men. He's simply saying, for all the men and for all the women. Now, this relationship can also be between you and God. This relationship, sorry, I'm just getting unnecessary calls, distraction. So, the relationship is between we and we. We. Hmm? God, me, me, you. God, me, you. That's relationship. So relationship is not only between a man and a woman. It's between God, me, and you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So that is relationship. Now we're talking about the relationship. And we're talking about how to make your relationship work. Because why I'm saying that? Because I have about 300 situations on my table. Why a lot of why this man wants to divorce their spouses and one few wants to end their relationship in which um, they have been for three years, four years and all that. So I just want to come talk about it because this relationship thing is becoming a problem in our society and God said in 2024 is going to be so worst when it comes to relationship. A relationship that we're meant to be together will be breaking. Why relationships that are not meant to be together will not stay together? Why in the marriage it will not split and separate forever? I said, why is this thing going to come like this kind of complex? The Lord is saying because your youth are too much, they are so much full of spirituality and carnally what? Minded. They are conscious spiritually, but they are carnally minded. So that's why I'm here to talk about the relationship. So the relationship is between God, man, and the woman, not between a man and a woman. If your relationship is between you and a woman, not God, it's going to crash. So it's between God and the man and you as a woman. God first, the man second, and you third. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Because the Lord said, teach them this relationship. Don't be sentimental about it. Don't be emotional about it. So that's it. So now straight to it. Relationship is between man and a woman. Relationship is between men and a man. Relationship is between women and women. Not really the lesbianism. Not really the homosexuality. I'm a man. I have relationship with my fellow friends, which are guys. But that does not mean we're sharing beds together. No. That does not mean we're kissing. But that means because we are open to each other. I am open to my spiritual father. I'm open to my spiritual father because I tell my spiritual father everything that I have done 
which are wrongs. So he corrects me. But before he corrects me, he rebukes me. That's relationship. So I must be able to have more relationship with my spiritual father, with my mother. The reason I can't have much relationship with my biological father, it is because his viewpoint does not come together with mine. His own conceptive or conception or mindset is quite different. So I don't tell him anything. I only tell my mom, who is close to me, who is ready to listen, and my father in the Lord. So that's relationship between men and men or men and women, God and men. So that's how it works. That's relationship. So because in 2024, a lot of you will walk away from a great future because of stupid mistakes, because worth is not worth it for you to walk away. So I'm here to say, how do I maintain, how do I maintain or build a healthy relationship? How do I keep, how do I maintain a healthy relationship? And I'll tell you, let's don't be spiritual so much, but I'll tell you, the tips or how to build it and how to maintain it. Number one, get to know yourselves. Are you understanding me? How to build your relationship. Get to know yourself. How can you know yourself? You can know yourself by knowing yourself. Get to know yourself. Take the time to appreciate yourself. And get in touch with your emotions to be able to express yourself clearly and more effectively. But the first one is get to know yourself. Take the time to appreciate yourself. What am I saying? If you are telling a man, can we know ourselves? Can we know each other? It's part of wasting time. The moment you see what you want in a man, what do you want in a man? A man who is good? Speaking English is a waste of time. <laughs> Husband material have nothing to do with good English. So, how do you know yourself? No, it's not one. Uh, Uzo Chuku is still, it's, it's not two, it's still one. Take yourself, take your time, sorry, take your time to know yourself and appreciate yourself. Give your relationship faith in that knowing yourself by taking your time to know yourself get to know yourself what do i mean there is no compulsory instruction that we must have a phone call text messages chat like as for me phone call i don't know what's happening to me i hardly want to talk on the phone and i keep asking god is this a problem is it a new problem God say no, you are becoming quiet. That's what I pray for, for you to become quiet. You can communicate through chatting. So it must not be a phone call. Because all day I am ministering to people. So at that time the Holy Spirit is, might be with me. And that's when you want to talk. And the people are waiting. No. Getting to know ourselves has nothing to do with 24 hours phone call. It has to do with chatting. I get what I'm saying? Chatting. Chatting is also getting to know yourselves. Meeting each other is part of it. Have no excuse about it. That's how to know yourself. He said, give me time to let's let's know ourselves before we accept. You're wasting time. He said, take the time to appreciate yourself. Appreciate yourselves. How are you? You look beautiful. Come on, send him some pictures. This is the way I'm looking today. Appreciation. Whatever you don't appreciate will depreciate. Whatever you don't appreciate, what will depreciate? So if you look common, or you are letting this woman or this man look common to you, it will depreciate. But we must learn to appreciate every woman. We must learn to appreciate every man. Something happened yesterday. No, two days ago, because today is today is 1 a.m. It happens two days ago. While I was growing up in, in the ministry, 
that is that is an acquired woman who owns a ministry the husband was still alive when the churches rejected me when the church chased me out this woman accepted me and say come you a man of God the Lord will lift you in my ministry and this church this ministry is in a house more like a store where we can only be like 10 people in that store where we pray together so that's where I grew some people think I grew in a big church no I grew in a small church that's why everywhere I go today everything I become is from those small churches not the big churches I go to it's those small churches there are churches I go on Tuesday on Wednesday I go there there are ministries I go there and I lie down and the women of God the men of God lay their hands on me and pray and I put my offering and I go not the big church it's the small church so the grace you see in me today is from the small churches not really from the big churches it's from the small churches because the big church is too big they're not focusing on you but if you go to the small churches they will focus on you they know when someone comes they know when someone leaves so I go there I lie down I don't care what I'm wearing I go and lie down this is where God comes from so I saw this woman two days ago the husband died early this year I no more go there because the ministry don't used to be other people have left the ministry has closed she only goes there except I'm around I go there we heal hands together to pray and this woman used to limp and she still limps why she was coming back from the church why she was coming back from I'm sorry I, I pray I don't cry and while I was driving out of the community, I saw her coming into the community. She went to church and she was holding a walking aid. And she didn't have a child with a husband that just died. But the husband had another woman in a Bible where he had child up to like four children. Because he knows this woman cannot give birth. I don't know why. But this woman suffered with him and built a house where they are living. And where they also used for the ministry. So when I saw this woman coming, immediately I sighted her. I started revising my car and I reversed and I turned the other side. Why she was getting close, she didn't know it was me. And I came down and I opened the door for her. I helped her. I, I helped her in, inside the car, inside the back seat and I asked her, and I asked her, mommy, do you, do you want me to put the AC on? Or you want the fresh air? She said, anyone. And God said, don't on the AC. Wind down. So that when people see you are driving her, their mental state will change. They will know you love her. And they know since you do your foundation, you love her and you are caring for her. They will respect her. So I wind down while she was going. I stopped at my mom's shop and I told my mom, you see this rice I bought for the pregnant women? I'm not going to give you any more. I took it. I said, it's for the widow, for the woman. She's like, okay, okay, that's your choice. I took it and I put it in the, inside the car. Do you know I was driving two days? I was driving the woman back to, to the house and I was crying. And she said, why are you crying? I said, because it looks like the world is against you. But I want to be for you, mommy. I want to be there for you. And she said, be strong. You are to encourage me, not for you to be emotional about my situation. This relationship I'm talking about, she doesn't have a son. She doesn't have a daughter. And, and, and I, and I, and I, and I took her inside the house. I helped her down. We, after I put her inside the car, I brought her down. We, we moved inside of the house. And when I wanted to leave, and she held my hand, she dragged me back. And I said, Mommy, what? Because every month I put her on salary. Since I know the husband died, I put her on salary. Um, close to $200 every month in Nigeria currency and she hugged me so tight 
very tight. The widow woman hugged me very tight. She shot, she's like five points, maybe 5.2 feet tall. And I hugged her and I went on my knees. And while she was blessing me, her tears was falling on my head. I, I, was, I was so emotional. So I left the house. And then I left the house. I left the house and while coming up and I got to the car and I started the car when about to move I saw a strange it's about relationship I saw a strange woman sat close to the car inside the car sorry in the passenger side in the front seat because I'm the only one driving and the woman looked at me and I'm like in the name of Jesus and then he said no it's not Jesus and this woman told me, you have never seen the angelic form that looks like a woman. I am one. I look like a woman. It will tell your people about relationship. You might not have a good relationship today, but Abel, I will give you relationships. I will cause men to be close to you that will never let you fall. That will stand by you. And I was crying. And I was moving. And I looked again. I didn't see the woman. So two days was the first day of seeing a kind of a female angel that looks like a woman. Exactly that looks like a woman. And she said she is the one who takes care of widows. That she has been following this woman for months. That, and I saw her hand touch me. And that my hand felt so cold. And I drove off because of that part. What am I saying? Your relationship is not about emotions, about woman and man, parents. What about you being close to those people who need you? Those people you should encourage. Because of that part, I encountered a woman angelic form of a woman who visited me, not spiritually, I'm talking about physical, and I felt cold. Since that two days, I have been so much down because I feel I haven't even done enough. So your relationship, stand on your feet and say, I'm going to make it work. Don't be so religious. Don't be so spiritual. Don't be so evil to be thinking everybody's evil. It's time for we to make our relationship work. Get to know people around you. Stop hearing what you hear about them and start doing what you can do for them. It's not about what you do for them even. It's about what you have with them. What do you have with them? You just want to have cars, you just want to have a house. 2021, I had a house. I gave it to the church. A one-story building. It was sold for 80 million. Last year, 2022, the same house. I gave it to the church. I don't care. My mother is crying. Abel, I want you to put a structure. Who cares about structure? Did I can't pay this house rent? I go to one room and stay. If I can pay one room, I'm going to look for a wood house to stay. If I can stay in wood house, I stay in the street. I don't care. I want to have a good relationship with God by having with people. That's what I want. Are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't want to have a good relationship with one beautiful girl alone. I want to have a relationship with one ugly girl that have cancer, all her face are falling. That's, that's the kind of relationship I want to have with her. I want to encourage someone out there. It's not about you. It's not about how you want them to treat you. It's not about how you want people to love you. It's about how you want to love all those people, other people, other people. You love them too. Love them. You only want love, but you don't give out love. You only want you want love. You want a man to care for you. You want a man to pet you. 
how many times have you paid other people? How many times have you paid other people? You cannot see someone in the street. You cannot be of help. So that's number one. Get to know people. Get to know yourself. Who are you? You flaunt with your breasts. You flaunt with your booty. That's not what the world wants. That's what the waste wants. I don't want to have a waste connection. I want to have a heart connection. No. I don't want to have a waste connection. It's all about bang, 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 bang. Oh, yeah. I want to have a heart connection. It's time for we to have a heart connection. You cannot say you were a Christian. You cannot say you were born again. You are full with hatred. I'm sharing rice. I bought three bags of rice for pregnant women. About 23 of them. But I don't have house. I don't have rice in my house as I'm talking to you. I'm going to eat rice today being Friday, but I don't have. So I'm going to buy four cups in the street outside the gate. But I don't have. But I make sure I got for someone out there. Is it all about you? Is the life all about you? What do you have? That breast? You don't have anything. That booty? You don't have it. Your skin color? You don't have anything. I don't want to have a waste connection. I want to have a heart connection. It's time for me to have connection with the heart. You come with so much religion. You come with so much Bible scripture. You come up with so many things, but you have no heart for it. Who are you? Number two. How to make your relationship work. Put it in work. Put your relationship. Put it to work. Put it to work. The moment you want money, you remember the man that is a fool who has been showing you love through money. Does it make sense? But the moment when you want to share your passion with, you share your passion with someone else. You are a dubious woman. You are a dubious man. But you don't want to share it with the person who wants to be with you. You will share it with someone else who does not deserve you. You don't have a heart connection with that person. It's just a waste connection. Because you, it's just all about you. It's all about you. No. Put it to work. You marry the wrong woman because... You have she cannot put it to work. You are not putting anything to work. You and your relationship is just at the top. You talk up, top, up, up. Let's talk down. Can you be able to go and see your husband? No, forget about husband. Husband is still far. Forget about religion. Forget about spirituality. Can you be able to go see your spouse? The man you are in a relationship with by odd hours by 1 a.m. If he needs your help, can you be able to go there? That's what we're talking about, sacrifice. Put it to work. Can you be able to give your last kobo to your spouse? Put it to work. How many times have you appreciated the man who is helping you than the man who wants you? I better stay with someone who is helping me than stay with someone who wants me. Because when he's done wanting me, he's going to let me go. But the man who is helping me will not let me go. It's time for me to have the heart connection, not the waist connection. I'm ready to be with someone who is helping me. There's someone who wants me. Maybe she wants me for now. But the person that is helping me is helping me because of the future. Who should I fall for? Who should I stay with? He's the one who is helping me. That's it. Put it to work. Your relationship will be great. We are all looking for destiny helper. There's no destiny helper. Everybody's suffering. There's no destiny helper. There's nothing like destiny helper anymore. The only people we have 
are the people God will send to us. But if God sent us people who are to help us and we don't keep a good relationship with them, it's going to end. Your prayers will be wasted. You pray for 24 hours, but you don't have the right attitude, the right character to keep a good relationship. You call yourself a Christian? No, you're not a Christian. You're a hypocrite. Some people are hypocrites. Some people are gold diggers. And that's why I don't want to have anything to do with young girls. Never. I don't have anything to do with any young girl because most of them think about now. They don't think about tomorrow. They want to think about the clothes they want to wear now, the cars they want to drive, how you take them to places, show them off. That's baby spirit. That's not for me. It's time for you to be with the people that appreciate it. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You just met him. He wants you to have international passport. You just met him. He wants you to get Wayek. You just met him. He wants you to go back to school. You just met him. He wants you to be up there. After SARS, I have about three ladies, two women who are married, one who is single. They pray in them, part of my prayer team. And you're like, oh my God. Ah, the day we in that plane. God, I will be so happy. I was like, ah, you guys have not entered plane before in your life? And I'm going up to 400 times. I've entered the plane. I've entered plane 400 times. I've entered helicopter like 100 and something times. And I said, oh, Sas, let's raise money for these people to get in plane. Oh, that's nice. I have, I have made it possible for 50 something. We are now on 59 who have flew because of me. I said, no, you want to go just fly, go there. Stay in a hotel one day, fly back, just have the experience. That's heart connection. It's not something that I have to do. Let's go together, let's go to Abuja and stay in one hotel. No, I've done that. 59 people, including husbands and wife. Make it work, make your relationship work. Side chicks are making your husbands and them relationship work. You as a wife, you have nothing to make it work. You only have bad mouth, bad mentality, poor mindset. Make it work. Last week, my mom was angry. She was talking to a woman that doesn't have anything to... I don't know. I know she doesn't know the woman. And I told my mom, please, Mrs. Florence. I didn't call her mom. I said, please, Mrs. Florence, can you keep quiet? Please, with your respect. That woman didn't know it was my mom. He said, man of God, this woman just got angry. She didn't want me to explain. I said, mommy, please. That was the last time. I said, your mother. I said, she's my mom. Go inside. Don't, don't. And I went and touched the woman at the back. I said, I'm sorry. Please. And I took money from the POS and I gave her 50000 I said, please take it. Whatever you want to buy with it in the Christmas, go ahead. And I explained to my mom. And my mom went back to me and said, I'm sorry. I didn't know it wasn't you. You see people doing bad? And you cannot talk? You are also bad, part of the bad person. Put all you are reading to work. Make it work. Put it to work. You don't want your relationship to work, but you want to jump into other people's relationship. Oh, this relationship is so good. You don't know what they have gone through into their relationship. You just want to have a relationship, that kind of relationship. But you cannot make your own work. Number three, set the respect. Set respect. Eh? Set respect and boundaries. My mother vowed. That when my father is talking, she would never talk back. That's a boundary. Sorry. That's a boundary. Let's have boundaries. As Christians, let's have boundaries. Oh, and God said we shouldn't fornicate. God said we shouldn't commit adultery. But you don't have boundaries. It's the same thing. Who fornicated and who crossed the boundaries? It's the same sin. All sin are equal. So try not to make fornication the greatest sin. 
and make your own the small sin. Well, I didn't know it. I want to just a small mistake. It's the same sin. You kill, you fornicate, you smoke, adultery. Is the sin are equal? No sin is bigger. The only sin we can recommend as a bigger sin is when you grieve the Holy Spirit. Is when you talk bad against God. That's the greatest sin. When you grieve the Holy Spirit, that's the greatest sin because who will forgive you if you grieve the Holy Spirit? So try not to make your sin look small and other people's sin looks big. You are hypocrites. You are just a Christian who is full of hypo, hypocrite. It's have boundaries. That's how you can make your relationship work. Have boundaries. And if this man tells me what to do, I will do it. That's the boundary. You're not coming to have equality. You are coming to have what? Honor. Submissive. Submissiveness, if there's any word like that. Number four, talk and listen. I want to grow my relationship. I want it to be better. I must be able to listen. I must be able to listen. I must be able to listen. One thing I, my sisters learned from my mom is listening, not talking. The Bible said somewhere in Proverbs, it says, saying your mind is foolishness. I want to see my mind. I want to see my mind. Let me see my mind. The Bible said it is foolishness. Because saying your mind doesn't change the fact. Saying your mind doesn't change any fact. The facts remain the fact. So the Bible says, say your mind is foolishness. What do you want to say your mind for? To change your mind? No, don't say your mind. Make it work. Say, I'm sorry. Talk and listen. Well, I want to tell you how I feel that you did me wrong. Listen. Saying your mind does not help you. It only shows how foolish you are and how you stupid. So don't say your mind. There is no mind to say in your relationship. It's the mind you can only put to practice is how to make it work. That's all. In this marriage, I want to say my mind the way I feel. You don't say how you feel. It can never be changed. It's how to listen that can make it work. Until you are permitted to talk. That's why I say talk. And what? Listening. There is a time for talking and there is a time for listening. So learn to talk little and listen well. Good listeners are more successful than talkers. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A good listener is much successful and much better than what? So people who listen get more blessed get more understanding but talking doesn't get you to anywhere so talk and listen which is number four number five let go of control let go of control as much as we're in a relationship together you want us to make it work who is in control let go of it i'm the man i'm the man i'm in charge no let it go i'm the woman as much as you are not married to me, you cannot tell me what to do. Uh -uh. That disqualifies you as a wife already. Because submission starts from relationship. It doesn't start from marriage. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So submission starts from the relationship, the courtship. And that's why when both of you marry, then God now recognizes it. And he now said, husband, love your wife. Because God is only watching in the part of your relationship. Then in the marriage, he cannot put mouth. That's why relationship goes with principles. Marriage goes with commandment. Relationship goes with what? Principles. Relationship goes with principle. Marriage now goes with commandment. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt satisfy your wife, and your wife shall satisfy thy husband. But in relationship is principles, in marriage is commandment. So we are in a relationship by faith, then we marry by faith. 
We don't marry because we know, but we marry because we understand that by faith we can make it work. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So you cannot, as much as she is not working it by principle, she's not following the principles of relationship, there's no need going further with her. There is no need going forward with him because there are principles that guides relationship to marriage. That is the commandment. If he cannot follow principles, he cannot, she cannot follow commandment. There are people I don't listen to. Never. There are people I don't, no matter how good their marriage is, I don't care. I don't listen to them. Are you understanding what I'm saying? There's nothing like modern marriage. There's nothing like ancient marriage. There's nothing like ancient relationship. No, it's the same. Nothing changes. So let's go of control. You want to control all the time. You're a woman. You decide when you see your man. You decide what, when, what to do. Are you understanding me? That's the principles I'm talking about. The principles of relationship. A woman cannot decide when to see her spouse. The man cannot decide when to see. Seeing each other is regular. Is a must as much as both of you are in the same city. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You cannot dictate when to see. As much as both of you are faithful together, seeing each other should be possible because of your job. If it's not because of your job, you should see every day. But if it's because of your job, like in a week, you can make sure you see three times. Let it be higher than when you talk on the phone. These are the principles. You don't want to go to your man's house. You don't want to go see who is cooking. If he's so rich, the girl who is cooking, what is she cooking? What, how is it like? Who, how his clothes are? You begin to study how he lives in relationship, not when he, you both of you are married. They don't test marriage. It is relationship they test that makes it better in marriage. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You work it out. I don't believe in this. I don't believe in this thing. The pastors, they say, well, don't go to his house. And those are nonsense stories. Why won't you go? I'll go to your house. I'll see how you live your life. I'll see how clean you are. I'm a very dirty man. I'm a, my mother used to call me a bad dirty, mean bag of dirty. That's what my mom used to call me. I don't, have, I don't have any secrets in me. I'm very dirty. But I observed that I began to grow. My mother doesn't disturb me again. She says, okay, the woman you will follow or you're dating will see how dirty you are. I used to have body odor. I used to have, I used to, my armpit used to smell. I shower. But I still have body odor. My mother taught me how to be clean. Because she's the, that's the principles. I years ago in school, her name is Linda. She taught me. Most people run away because of my armpits used to smell. She, how she was there, she taught me. This relationship. Stop looking for red maid. Make your own better. Make your own work. Stop looking for red maid. The one that is already clean, dress rich. No, make yours like that. But how can they make you how can they make you better when you don't listen? No man can change you because you don't listen as a woman. If they advise you, you feel he's mocking you. No. Every man who went to school wants a woman who is more knowledgeable. Relationship works well. It's either the man is higher in knowledge than you or the woman is higher in knowledge than you you must be humble to learn that's the most important thing so don't let pastor tell you both graduates must marry graduates no graduate must not marry graduate graduates can marry an illiterate but who is this illiterate is this illiterate does he or she listen if they listen if they are learned it's possible for you to marry them. Marry your class. Marry your standard. 
It's a lie. And let me tell you when they talk about marry your best friend. It's good, but you can also marry the person and make the person your best friend. We might not start as best friends, but we can marry into ourselves as best friends. Thank God. You call it a teachable spirit. You cannot tell somebody who is here, please, can you just stand up and fix this thing? Why are you telling me to stand up? Are you commanding me? That's a bad spirit. A real demonic spirit. Let go of control. Number five, reflect and learn. How do I maintain my relationship? Number one, get to know yourself. Take time to appreciate yourself because you can never know yourself without appreciating yourself. There is nothing you can ever know a man. So a woman who's saying, give me time to know you better. You can never know a man. It is time you start appreciating and both of you will work together. And I said in number two, put it into work. Put it into work. Put it into work. Put it into work. All your relationship you listen to from the spiritual angle, you need to consider your spouse. Are they really born again? Before you want to give them that so-called commandment of yours. But when you walk with them with love, they will come into you and understand you and follow Christ. You understand? Number three, set and respect boundaries. Peter said somewhere in the book of 1 Peter also, he said, respect women. Men respect women. Don't disrespect them because you want to be respected. No. Know your boundaries. Know the things what to say and know what not to say. And that said, number four, talk and listen. After talking, keep quiet and listen to your spouse. Don't talk throughout the whole conversation and you don't let her or you don't let him talk. Both of you should have talk and listen. And a good wife, my grandfather used to say, a good woman listens more than she talks. Because she is the one married as a support to the husband, not as the head. So she has to listen. Number five, let go of control. Stop being charged because a woman you just came back from work. No, 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 no. I never can make it. How can you tell me to go? No, honey, please. I just came back from work. Okay, please give me a few time. Give me like three hours. Okay, if I can come, can you come over? Okay, let me try. Let me try. Now, do you know you can also sleep in your man's house? It's not a sin. It is not a sin to sleep in your man's house. It's not a sin to sleep in your woman's house. But what is a sin is what you are doing in their houses when you are there. But you staying over is not a sin. It is only religious people who said it's a sin. But as much as you have self-control, you can sleep in each other's house. It is courtship. You are knowing yourself for crying out loud. It's not Holy Spirit relationship. It's courtship. It's flesh and flesh. Not spirit and spirit. Know how she's sleeping. Is she snoring? I hate a snoring woman. She's snoring. Yes, I will love her. She's snoring. It's okay. I'm still there. I love her so much. So I have to buy her a snoring aid. When I put that snoring aid, it will stop. Or I take away the pillow while she lies straight to the bed. She's not going to snore. Oh, you didn't know she was snoring and both of you married and you start yelling. <sighs> really? Did you tell me you were snoring when we were dating? How would I have told you this thing that I'm snoring? I didn't know it's going to make you or get you angry. She's snoring. How will you do? Will you chase her away? You won't. You won't chase her away. Yeah. Or you want to marry a dirty woman? Everywhere you go, her clothes, she can't wash it. They are smelling. You love her so much, you start teaching her. Let go of control. Teach. Learn. Listen. Oh my God. Oh boy. My babe house dirty. She's a very dirty girl. How go do now? 
If I'm your friend, I'll tell your boy teacher now. She go fit teach him. If you be clean guy, teach him how to be clean now. Teach him not smart thing. I won't carry teach that person. She need to hear something. That's where the problem is. That's why they left you. Not because you're not too good. You can have the back and front, but you're not good. You're not good enough. So the moment a man knows you're not good enough to listen, some of them start using you as a sex object. Or they stop telling you things so that they don't want to get you angry. They did the relationship and everybody walk away. But a good listener, a good director will help you and both of you will grow together. Oh, your clothes are dirty. Oh, pack them, pack them, pack them, pack them. Let me take them to the laundry. Let's go together. Oh, but I can wash it. No, babe, don't stress yourself. Now, you are not telling her she cannot wash it because she, you know she's a dirty person. She's so lazy to wash her own clothes. Take her clothes to the laundry. If you know he's a dirty guy, take his clothes to the laundry. Pay for it. When you pay, you bring it. You arrange it. From there, you've done it once or twice. Or when they pay, or when it's like, you can go and meet your guy and say, please, I need money for something. Don't tell him it's for the laundry. And take the money and pay the laundry, bring it. Only you like the way they are. You see, it's clean. Arrange it like this, it's clean. That's how big boys are. You arrange it. He sees reason in what you are saying. She sees reason in what you are saying. Okay, I cannot go with your underwear. This one, you can be able to wash it. Wash it yourself. Teach them. Buy custard rubber, smaller rubber. Don't spring your pants anywhere because you feel you don't have visitors. No. One day, people will come to visit you. You don't expect. And your panties are everywhere. You buy a rubber. Put them inside put them you cover them learn to cover them when you're going to the bathroom anyone you wear wash them that day don't soak it don't keep it to the next day you teach her how to be clean not like mm, that girl with this man a woman kept me the way i am kept me clean i used to have body odor and pit odor i used to i used to smell so a lot of people who have seen me with so much knowledge just feel maybe they can just come and say I'm beautiful. Do you know how many men are looking for me if we are going out? We're going, I don't care about your beauty. Get out. That's, the, that's it. Build people. Stop walking away from people. So let go of control. Help. The day you hug her, her armpits are smelling you say, babe, you have pits. I know you've sweated. Or if the English sweated is wrong. I know you're full of heat. It's okay. Come. You have shawl? Put it in. You say, shh, my friend, lift up your two hands. I will deal with you today. But don't tell her you want to tell her that your armpit is smelling. It can be insult. You say, my friend, lift up your two hands. She lift them up. I will punish you. You'll be dealing with me. You smoke it. You hold her hand. You play with her. You bend that hand. And you put the, the thing there. Ah, ah, this show looks good on you. It's like I will dash you. Let me try the other one. You put it. Ah, it's nice. You see? Ah, it's even better on your skin than mine. You say, oh yeah, take. Take it. See how you use it. Use it in the morning when you are going. After you clean your armpit, use it in the morning. Eh? Make sure you use it very well. When it finishes, it will be my duty to be buying it for you. That's sure. But you tell her it's perf. They don't use it on clothes. They only use it for you. Manner approach is better. Your woman is too fat. You don't tell her, you are too fat. Why don't you sleep? I met you. No. You call her, baby, come here. Let go of control. You call her, come here. See, this gift God gave to me is not getting bigger. Oh. It's getting bigger. So you ask, what gift is that? Ah, you are the gift of my life now. Look at you, you are getting bigger. Eh? The gift of God is getting bigger. Ah, is that how God will bless you, bless you, bless you, you keep it Let's walk according to our blessing. She will not smile. Uh, hey, I'm a gift. Uh, big. Okay, how do I do? Okay, let's be doing exercise. Take her to the gym. Register her. If you can't register her because you don't trust the gym, 
All you have to do is to put on YouTube, buy her data, exercise in the morning. You do that, you say, yeah, yeah. sometimes encourage her with money to exercise. If you do this one 20, I'll give you 10,000. Really? She will not do it. And you give her 10,000. And so you give me 3,000 naira tight. I'm going to put it for you. And I say, no, 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 no. Give me my own full money. You take the money. 3,000. Inside later, I see that money on it. That, please cook for me. I'm coming. I don't have money. What about that money? I dashed you. Help me. Now don't worry. I'll give you another time. I'll give you. I'll give you. The money is for you. It's for him. It circulates. Let's go of control. Church people, don't be spiritual too much. These are the basic things we should learn. Number six, which is the last one. Reflect and learn. Reflect and learn. What do I mean by reflect? Your past relationship, what has been the problem? In your past relationship, what has been the problem? She left you because you're a cheater. That's the problem. Reflect. Okay, it has ended. What should I do? I should stop cheating. Okay, yes. It's in your family blood. Yes, cheating is in so many people's blood. You have to go far. I'm not trying to be religious. I say, no, you will kill it. Changes does not come automatically. I was a born again Christian when I was still masturbating, when I was still watching porn. Until deliverance came. Christianity is accepting, following, believing in Christ. That's the meaning of Christianity, which is power. The being born again is to be submissive to his will. That's being born again. And to grow in his ways. He didn't say to automatically switch. No, to grow. The Bible said grow in his way. That's what being born again. It's a process. Reflect and learn. What scattered your first relationship? The moment you say, man, hey, is this baby, is this same thing that ended me and that guy relationship? Oh, you now you started it. No, don't tell him that. You are comparing. The first thing you see, you, you reflect back. I say, this is what scattered my relationship. Now, in this relationship, you not change the tactics. You change the system. So that what happened before doesn't happen again. That's it. Those are the six things on how to maintain. Then the last part before I call it a day. Fix a broken relationship. How do I fix a broken relationship? Man of God, we've broken up. So let me take water. The engine needs to be wet. Ways to fix a broken relationship. Ways to fix a broken relationship. Ways. How do I fix a relationship that has been broken? But before you must fix a broken relationship, first of all, take away religion. Are you hearing me? Take away what? Religion. Just take it away. That's why it looks like a Christian and a Muslim cannot marry because we are so much of religion problem so our our understanding is based on religion not based on our personalities because relationship is on our personalities our principles are what that what we believe in and what we not believe in so religion will always come as clash but it takes people who are exposed as a Christian as a Muslim to marry it takes two people who are exposed to marry as a Christian and as a Muslim. It takes it because religion will never let both of you marry. But exposure and understanding with knowledge can make a Christian marry a Muslim. What do I mean? 
I believe that I, I want to go to church by 6 o'clock. And the kids need to be taken care of by the wife. What happens? She understands that I have to go to church. She's a Muslim, so she stays back home and take care of the kids. When it's time for me to go to the, uh, to the Islam, or to the Muslim, to the mosque, I take care of the child. If we're so rich to employ a maid, she does it. We will not have problem. But when you want to measure life, marriage is not spiritual. I tell you, it is not spiritual. It is carnal. Marriage is carnal. Then five percent spiritual. So you can still be highly spiritual and still not have a working marriage and still not have a working relationship. That's to tell you that your relationship is not on the religion part. It's not on your spirituality. It's on your principles. But your pastor will not tell you because he wants everything to come from the word of God. No. The percentage in relationship in spirituality is 5% if it's not 2%. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That's it. So I want to fix my broken relationship. I want to fix it. I want to fix my broken relationship. Number one. I must start dating again. I must start dating again. I must start being in a relationship again. I must let go of the past. And I must start dating again. That's to fix it. I want to fix it. I must start dating again. You guys are not yet in a relationship when you say, Oh, if I come to your house now, you will start touching me. If I come now, you want to have sex. You have not started. That's nonsense relationship. You've not started it. That's a very nonsense relationship. As a woman, you are complaining, Oh, all he wants is sex. No, do you give him money and he didn't take? You give him your father property. That's nonsense. If he wants sex, you can reject sex and offer him something else. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Did he date you because you're a sex tools? Not really. Men are likely to be tempted. So put them in their place. How do you put them in their place? Is by letting them know that this thing will go not come tie out. Guy, is it this thing? Ha! <laughs> when I ready, when I'm set, you will know I'm a fire. You will run. But for now, let's face the primary stuff. This one is secondary stuff. That's it. You've put him into his place. You don't need to fight over it. You don't need to run over it. Because when you are in the marriage, how will you, will you keep running away? You face it. Deal with it. Keep it into his place. It's as simple as that. You know why? Do you know God can tell you that this man is for you. Huh? But the same man came and be asking of sex. And you're like, but God, you say this man is my real husband. Why is he asking of sex before marriage? God will not answer that stupid question. It is for you to change the mindset of the man. Because you can marry God's choice and still divorce. You need to add the principles. I've seen good God's will. I've seen two guys two ladies, I mean, a man and a woman who are God's will, they still divorce because they refuse to apply the process. So, start dating again. Give a relationship a second chance. And number two, to fix a broken relationship, make your relationship a priority. Make your relationship a what? A priority. Make your relationship a priority. Make it a priority. This priority I'm talking about, both of you can quarrel, both of you can fight, but both of you are still inside. That is a good sign that the marriage will work. Not when both of you, when both of you are not good, you will keep malice, she will keep malice, it's not a healthy relationship. Both of you are fake grown-up people. Fake people are people who quarrels. 
and the whole and the whole world and say, "Are you not the one who said three days ago?" Those are kids. Make your relationship a priority. I know you made this mistake. I know you are the one. I saw you with that girl. I know you are cheating me. Well, I'm sleeping. I just want to say I love you. Good night. Really? That's what works. How can I tell him good night? How can I tell him I love him? When he when he decided to do me what? You are not matured. You cannot forgive a marriage. You cannot let go in marriage. You will keep having grudges. Well, you, I just want to say you pissed me off today. But I cannot tell you... Um, good, I cannot sleep without telling you good night because I love you. But that does not mean I'm not angry with you. I'm angry with you, but I love you. Good night. You sleep. You wake up in the morning. Oh, you still didn't tell me sorry. Eh? You didn't tell me sorry. You didn't reply me. It's okay. That's your business. Good morning. How was your night? And you reply, eh, fine. Eh, thank you. I'm going out. Bye. Later. That's a relationship that works. Not when both of you have issues. You not keep it in the next day. You're having malice. My name is Professor Maliso. I can keep Maliso very well and very good. <laughs> we'll keep the malice. So that's it. Make your relationship a priority. If you cannot talk on the phone, chat is good. Number three, let go of expectations. Your expectations are too high. That's why the devil fought the relationship and the relationship crashed. Your expectations are too high. In your relationship as a woman, never you expect him to marry you. No. In your relationship as a man, never you expect her to be very humble. No. It's in the place of building you can expect, not in the place of starting. You don't expect in the place of starting. Oh, I entered my house, I saw rats. Uh, but no. Be inside the house, see the rat, and discuss it together. How do we kill this rat? That's how it works. Huh? Make your relationship a priority. Let's go of expectation. Some of us expectations are too high. That's why the relationship got broken. Your relationship will always break when your expectations are high, so high. Nobody can meet up your expectation. No, oh, it is wrong. It is very wrong. Hmm? Nobody is your class. Nobody is your standard because your expectations are too high. I want a man that is slim, tall, is huge, is gym, is this, this, this. Those are nonsense expectations. I want a woman who has big butters, who has breasts. Those are nonsense compared to companionship. Are you understanding me? So let's go of expectations. Number four, plan a weekly Plan a weekly what? Meetings. Plan a weekly meetings. In a week, both of you must see twice. The one that will make it the third day, both of you must go dinner together or lunch together. But let it be every week. Plan weekly meetings. In your house, twice. The one that will make it a third one, both of you can go to an outing. Your outing should be weekly, not monthly. So, how to fix a broken relationship is plan a weekly meeting. Including you that is married, go to hotels. You must not sleep with her in the hotel that is close to you or your house. Go to the hotel and sleep together. Go and have a good experience and a atmosphere. So, that's it. Plan a weekly meeting. In a week, both of you must meet once, twice. Eh? So, that is just what I'm saying. Number five. Always say thank you. You finish arguing. I don't like what you are doing. It's okay. I'm sorry. Thank you for correcting me. Always appreciate. Mm? Always appreciate. Say thank you. Appreciation is in a, in a relationship makes it stay. And number six, try to hold hands and hug more. Church people are hearing. 
hug more and try to hold hands. When both of you are walking, you hold your hands and be walking. That's how it is. That's how to fix your relationship. Both of you hold hands together. Holding hands and walking together is not a sin. Hmm? Hold your hands, hug each other, peck each other. Pecking is not a sin when you go and say, oh, come here. You hug and you do, it's not a sin. Church people, it's not a sin. Hmm? Hugging and pecking is not a sin. Number seven. Have fun together. How to fix a broken relationship? Number seven. Have eh, fun together. What a fun. Both of you can play. Not every time you are too serious. No, both of you can play. You go to his house, you play with him, he comes to your house, you play. Both of you must build that fun part in play. Fun is not when you remove on this and slot in your stick. No. Fun is normal. Fun is normal. Fun is a must. So that's it. Hmm? Ditch the routine and have fun together. Number eight. Both of you must see a therapist. A relationship that does not have a mentorship will only clash on the rock ship. So both of you should learn to see a therapist. Learn to go for counseling. If you know you want to have a good happy home in your relationship, start going to what? To marital counselors, to guide you people. A perfect relationship is the one that always visits the therapist. The therapist will give you uh, some details on how to do it. I want to say thank you. That's all I have to talk about now. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening. And I want to say God bless you on this relationship part. Uh, it is so. We close that for now. We we'll close that for now. So we want to say thank you so much. And God bless you in this section. Put me in your prayers. Our God will bless you. Hmm? God will bless you. I have 2024 prophecies to give, but we are not talking about it today. We're not talking about it today. We're not talking about it today. Hmm? I have 2024 and 2025 prophecies, but not today. I will come after my foundation on the 24th and the 25th, then I can be able to come. Oh! Oh, that's it. So, thank you so much, everybody. Uh, so, put me in prayers. Put me in prayers. I need the prayers. Put me... Put me in prayers. I want you to put me in prayers from the hands of bad kidnappers, killers, women, scandals, and all that. Just put me in your prayers. Never... Put me your prayers in the name of Jesus. Uh, I need it. I need it. I need it. I need it. So we're going to call it for a day. So that I can be able to have a good rest. So tired. Mm. Thank you, Timothy or Larry Waju. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. So I want to say thank you and God bless you. The ATB Foundation, we need your support. We still need extra six million to buy the extra bags of rice. Please support us. Support us with your your bags of rice. Support us with whatever eatable that you have. But that is not spoiled, that is still good. Support us. I bought the cow for it. That's what we're going to eat. Are you understanding me? 
That's what we're going to eat, cook rice, give free rice, take away rice where they'll go and eat. Then we're also going to give raw rice to the widows. Raw rice. We're giving 5 kg rice to the widows. So we need more money. I need more money. I'm not celebrating any Christmas. I'm not buying any new clothes. I'm not buying any new clothes. I'm not buying any shoe. All my money, all my blessings, all the whole seed they sold, it's all for the widow. Support me, please. ATB Foundation, come to the inbox and get the details. Support me. Support me. You will watch it live on that day. We've done this, the, the fourth foundation program we are putting in place. There will be cameras and all that. So support us. Hmm? Thank you so much. And Kiru said nothing. Please support us. Pray for me against every bad, bad gang against me who plan to shoot me, who plan to kidnap me, who plan to do all sort of atrocities and all that. And pray for God to help me with the people who are right, not the people who keep hearing the news and they will run away. Thank you, everybody. I want to say God bless you. So you can inbox me for the, the seed sowing and um, God will help. And so shall it be in the name of Jesus. So it's for 1,000 widow. 1,000 widow and all that. So that's it. But, you know, Okay, so please support. I will beg you. So after the twenty fourth, I will come back to give you the prophecy for 2025, 2024 and twenty twenty five. So for now, be patient with me. I hear it. Be patient with me. Be patient. Be patient. Be patient. So keep putting me in your prayer. Amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. And amen. And amen. Amen. So thank you. I know I will survive. I know I will live. But the will of God, who am I? I'll join him in heaven. And you like this. So I'd rather die. Than being a gay, I'd rather be a Muslim than being a hypocrite. I will never be such. So I want to say thank you. I love you. Huh? From the bottom of my kidney, heart, liver. Huh? In case so, I always tell people I love them. Good night.